Sienna, Catherine of Sweden, Cecilia, Charles, Charlotte, Chiara Luce, Christian, Christina, Christopher, Clara of Assisi, Claude, Conrad, Cosmos, Damien, Daniel, David, Dio, Dismas, Dominic, Dominic Savio, Donald, Dorothy, Drogo, Dimphna, all preachers of the gospel. Stein, Edward, Eli, Elijah, Elisha, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Ann Seton, Elizabeth of Portugal, Elizabeth of Hungary, Emily, Emma, Erasmus, Eugene, Eustatius, Eve, Faith, Faustina, Felicity, Ferdinand, Flavia, Florence, Francis Xavier Cabrini, Francis of Assisi, Francis de Sales, Francis Xavier, Gabriel, Gemma, Genesius, Genevieve, George, Gerald, Gerard, Gertrude, Gianna, Gillian, Grace, Gregory the Great, Goodman, Empress Helen, Helena, Herbertus, Hildegard, Hope, Hubert, all messengers of God. Ignatius of Antioch, Ignatius Loyola, Emmanuel, Irene, Isaac, Isabel, Isabella, Isadora of Seville, Evo, Jacob, James the Greater, James the Lesser, Jane Francis, Jerome, Joan of Arc, John of God, John the Apostle, John the Baptist, John Bosco, John of the Cross, John Paul II, John Vianney, Joseph, Josephina, Josephine, Joshua, Juan Diego, Jude, Judith, Julia, Juliana, Justin, Julius, Justice, Kateri Tekawitha, Catherine Drexel, Catherine, Kevin of Ireland, Kiara, all men and women of prayer. Leo the Great, Lidwina, Lillian, Lorenzo, Louis the Ninth of France, Louise de Maryland, Lucas, Lucy, Luke the Evangelist, Luke the Younger, Luigi, Lydia, Lidwina, Madeline, Marcella, Marcellinus, Marcia, Margaret Mary Alico, Margaret of Sita, Margaret of Scotland, Marguerite Bourgeois, Marie Elizabeth Hezebald, Maria Rosa, Maria Garetti, Mary Ann, Marie, Marie Armandine, Maristello, Marius, Mark the Evangelist, Pope Mark, Martha, Martin, all prophets of God's peace and justice. Saints of God in glory. Matthew, Matthias, 
Maureen, Maximilian Colby, Maximus, Melania, Michael, Monica, Moses, Natalia, Nicholas, Nicole, Noel, Norbert, Oliver, Olivia, Olympus, Owen, Patricia, Patrick, Paul, Paul of the Cross, Peregrine, Peter the Apostle, Peter Claver, Philip, Philomena, Phoebe, Pio, Polycarp, Prisca, Quadragesimus, Rafka, Raphael, Raymond, Richard, Rebecca, Regina, Renee, Rita, all missionaries and martyrs. Ronald, Rosalia, Rose of Lima, Rose of Viterbo, Rose Philippine Duchenne, Ruth, Salvatore, Sarah, Samuel, Sebastian, Serafina, Scholastica, Simon Peter, Simon, Simon of Cyrene, Sophia, Stephen, Sylvester, Tarsicius, Teresa of Avila, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Teresa of Lisieux, Teresa of Portugal, Thomas the Apostle, Thomas Aquinas, Thomas More, Timothy, Tobias, Uriel, Valentine, Veronica, Victoria, Valana, Vincent de Paul, Virginia, Vitas, Vladimir, William, William Joseph, Wolfgang, Zachariah, all saints of heaven. Saint of God in glory, be with us, rejoice with us, sing praise with us, and pray with us now. May God save us from all evil, from every sin, from everlasting death, May God save us by his coming among us, by his death and rising to new life, by his gift of the Holy Spirit. Hear the prayers of all your people.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest heaven. Glory to God, glory to God and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God. we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Jesus showed the apostles that he was alive by many proofs that he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God while meeting with them. He enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, 
but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, in the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption, through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if we only... If only we suffer with him, so that we may only be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The spirit of truth, which the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows it. But you know it because it remains with you and will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Welcome to all. I should add a word of gratitude that uh, the rain and the storms have passed uh, away and that we can have a wonderful confirmation mass for our young people. It's always a privilege for the pastor to introduce uh, the young people uh, to the archbishop. But before I get to that, on behalf of my parish family, my brother priest, uh, seminarian Samuel, I want to welcome Archbishop Emeritus Robert Carlson uh, to our parish. Actually, I should say, welcome back. Well, you've been with us several times over the years. So... Welcome back, Archbishop 
Carlson. Then a special welcome for retired Bishop Bob Herman. Welcome. Uh, Bishop Herman this evening is serving as a sponsor for one of our young people, uh, John Paul Blanner. So a welcome to our uh, retired bishops and archbishop. Now I invite our young people to be confirmed to please stand. So I know I can speak on behalf of my brother priests, certainly our teachers uh, and your parents to say that uh, we love you. Uh, we love spending time with you. Of course, the teachers, a little more time. Your parents, as the first teachers since your baptism. But I love being with you. Of course, my wonderful eighth graders and then our PSR students. I always tell them it's not school, but uh, for disciple making. So, blessings. I enjoyed reading your uh, letters. They write a letter to the archbishop, to the pastor, and I've enjoyed reading those letters about their desire to continue to uh, be close to the Lord, uh, to be a good disciple, especially here at our parish, to always stay close to the sacred heart of Jesus. And so special blessings for the uh, sponsors. Many of the sponsors are just slightly older. We always have a lot of our young adult sponsors. So um, Archbishop Emeritus Robert Carlson, a great joy for me to present to you our confirmation candidates. Good evening, and the candidates can please be seated. Now, you probably noticed that uh, since the last time I was here, I, I've adopted a cane, and uh, it helps me get around. But many years ago, when I was a young bishop and Pope John Paul was an older pope, uh, he used to have a cane, and he said, you know, I've learned to do something with it. <laughs> so I've been practicing, and I thought I'd go out in the center there and try it a few times, but then one of the mothers said, no, I'm afraid you'd hit my son. <laughs> so I'm not going to do it. But it does keep me upright. But you know, as I was listening to your pastor, he said such beautiful things about the class. And as I was sitting there, I thought, I'm going to have to change my approach. You see, many of you my age remember the old days when the bishop would come and he go up and down the rows asking questions. Everyone so looked forward to it, <laughs> especially the candidates in the first row. But then I decided, well, since he said so many nice things, I don't think I'll do that tonight. I'm going to change it. So would the sponsors please stand? I'm going to ask you the questions. <laughs> now, this is a kind of a brave group. Uh, there's a young man over here who's kind of encouraging his sponsor to get up and answer the questions. <laughs> and in the old days, I'd have picked on you, but I've gotten much nicer since I've got old. I can't run as fast. <laughs> so tonight, we get to share with these young people this beautiful sacrament. And the phrase which came to mind to me as I was reflecting on tonight was the phrase, Come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle on them the fire of your love. So this evening, as we celebrate the sacrament of confirmation, we're invited to call upon the Holy Spirit. And mom and dad, as I'm calling upon the Holy Spirit tonight, you can call upon the Holy Spirit in your prayer, and grandmas and grandpas as well, as we sit here. For we want an outpouring of the Holy Spirit this evening so that these young people are touched by his grace and by his blessing. And you know, we're, we're also very fortunate to have sponsors. And uh, I want to thank you for uh, doing that. But I'm sure you were chosen just looking over the crowd for your good looks. But the job is not over tonight. You see, these young people chose you to represent them, be their sponsor. But when they go home, they have the right to call upon you as they learn what it means to be a Catholic as they have questions about the faith, 
And also, if they're not in church next Sunday, I'll give you my telephone number before you leave. Call me and I'll come out and redo the confirmation because obviously something didn't work. So, sponsors, you've got quite a task ahead of you. And you already said yes, so you know, you must know what you're getting into. And moms and dads, where are the moms and dads? Would you please raise your hand if you're a mom or dad? All right. Well, thank you for coming and presenting your young daughters and young sons. But you know, you have an awesome responsibility. The church talks about the family like a little church with Christ at the center. Now, maybe it wasn't like that tonight as you're rushing to get up here in the middle of a rainstorm. But hopefully most of the time, that's what it's like. Because you see, when you entered the vocation of Christian marriage, you took upon yourself the responsibility of raising any children you had in the faith. And what an awesome responsibility that is. And so, you have the task, really, to teach them and to deepen their faith experience. For they have the right, actually, to ask you, well, Mom and Dad, why are we Catholic? I hope you think about that. Because they should ask. And why did you choose the vocation of marriage? Mom and Dad, think about that. Because they have the right to ask. And you know, you especially are challenged if you weren't worth with your young people last Sunday. Because they're going to say, well, why are we Catholic? We don't even go to church. Wow. I'd hate to be a parent in that situation. But the church expects that you'll parent. And that you'll be a tremendous example as a father, as a mother, to the young people that you're raising. So that they can discover through your practice and through your words and through your experience what it means to be a confirmed Catholic. Because we can say easily, may the Holy Spirit rest upon them. But I remember a lady said to me one time, you know, I've never heard the Holy Spirit speak. Well, the Holy Spirit's always speaking. And I said to her, ma'am, you apparently aren't listening. Because if you don't listen to the Holy Spirit deep within your heart, deep within your soul, you're not going to hear the Holy Spirit speak. And there might be some people here tonight that uh, as they sit there, they say, you know, Jesus isn't very close to me. Of course, the opposite of that is, you're not very close to Jesus. But this is your lucky night. Because if you sit there right now and you don't think Jesus is very close to you and you haven't heard the Holy Spirit speak, say this prayer. Jesus, come into my heart and into my life. And you know the Lord always answers that prayer. Now, nobody here will know whether you say it or not. But what do you have to lose? Except a tremendous love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you were confirmed a long time ago, you begin to hear the Spirit speak to you. St. Paul tells us, lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Ask yourself this question. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Is he quietly knocking at the door of your heart? And do you hear him? And if you happen to be a sponsor in that situation, or a parent, or a relative, how are you going to help them know what it means to be a Roman Catholic filled with the power of the Spirit? Oh, that reminds me, are there any grandparents here? If you're a grandma or a grandpa, just raise your hand. You kind of look like me, so I know who you are. <laughs> now, I want you to know that you have an awesome responsibility. You see, I'm going to ask you tonight... And from this day forward, to say a prayer each day for your grandson or granddaughter who was confirmed tonight. Now, if you're a grandma or a grandpa with lots of grandchildren, just say the rosary at the beginning of the day and get the prayer out of the way. <laughs> because these young people need that. And what a powerful thing that would be if, if they could come to you and say, Grandma, do you pray for me every day? And you say a blessed yes. Grandpa, do you pray for me every day? And you say a blessed yes. Why would you do that? You would explain to your grandson or granddaughter, I do it because I came to your baptism. 
whom he blessed you and the water was poured over you and you became a daughter of God, a son of God. I came to your first Holy Communion when you received our Lord body and blood for the very first time and you were so proud. And now I'm at your confirmation, being blessed with the Spirit as you grow and mature in the faith. I pray for you so that you are open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't happen just automatically. It happens when we have a tremendous army praying for us and for our young church. They will fulfill the role that they've been called to fill. And with their knowledge of the faith so well taught here at St. Margaret Mary Alaco, that they would not only know it, but they would live it. And as a matter of fact, they would have a goal to grow in holiness. Yes, holiness. You see, it's not just the saints that God expects to be holy. It's uh, every one of us. So if there's anybody here who's not holy, you want to just stand up and we'll pray over you. <laughs> this, Father, Norb, this is the greatest congregation I've ever been with. There's not one person here who's not on the way to sainthood. That program you do before the Mass, in the future, it's going to be about an hour and a half with all the saints that you're minting right here. But if you're not a saint yet, well, you better get busy. Because what did Jesus give to us as an invitation? He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Do you nourish your soul? Do you know how to do that? It's not a steak dinner. It's uh, not imbibing in some beverage. We nourish the soul when we pause and we ask Jesus to come into our heart and into our life. And we come before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and we pray, Lord, touch me deep within me. How do I know that? Because I have to say that prayer myself every single day. And when we receive the Holy Eucharist, the Lord who died on the cross for us is present in our hearts and in our lives. Wow. And if we do all those things, then the light and activity of Jesus Christ himself will be within us. And people will say, you know, there's something different about that person. They don't seem like the average run of the mill. They have something that I want. I had a, a great aunt who had sacrificed tremendously in her life. She was engaged to get married, and my mother's father died. It would have been my grandfather. And my grandmother had three children under five. They lost their home. And Aunt Molly, that wonderful lady, moved in with them. She called off her wedding, and she spent her whole life being the wage earner for that little family. After they lost their house, they moved into a two-bedroom apartment, but they couldn't even afford that. So they rented out one of the bedrooms. And in the one bedroom, my grandmother and great aunt, my mother, who was a baby, who they opened up the lowest drawer of the dresser, and that was her crib. And my two uncles, again, I think four and five at the time, lived together. Wow. Now, I didn't know that when I was a young person. But I said to my mother one time, I said, you know, there's something about Aunt Molly that makes her special. Now, as an eight or nine-year-old, I didn't know about her sacrifice. But as you walk out of church tonight, who thinks that you're special because of the way you live your life? Because of the sacrifice that you offer? Because of the way you pray? or the way you treat others, or generosity to those in need. I hope it's every single person in this church. And if you're one of them that isn't, it's not too late. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Would the confirmation class and their sponsors please stand? So now before you receive the Spirit, I ask you to renew the profession of faith you made in baptism or your parents and godparents made in union with the whole church. Do you re uh, the uniform response, by the way, is I do. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? That is exactly the right answer. <laughs> Said with all the enthusiasm of a melting snowbank. <laughs> now I should tell you, I I'm retired. I've got nothing to do until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. <laughs> and trust me, we're gonna get it right. So with a little more enthusiasm. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? And do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost, and today is given to you sacramentally in confirmation? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I invite the sponsors to place their hand on the right shoulder of their candidate. My dear friends, in baptism, God our Father gave the new birth of eternal life to his chosen sons and daughters. Let us pray to our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit to strengthen his sons and daughters with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to come forward to be sealed with the sacred chrism. Take away the melodies, take away the songs I sing, take away all the lights, and 
Behold the songs you let me write Does the man I am today Say the words you need to say Let them see you in me Another smile, another face, another breath, a grain of sand, passing quickly through your hand. I give my life an offering, take it all, take everything, let them see.
I would ask the confirmation class to now please stand. You can turn towards wherever your family is sitting. And I invite the congregation to congratulate the newly confirmed. And if the rest of the congregation would join the candidates or newly confirmed standing for the prayer of the faithful. My dear friends, let us be one in prayer to God our Father, 
as we run in the faith, hope, and love his spirit gives. For the people of God, may the Holy Spirit, whose gift and presence we celebrate today, be our source of guidance in all things. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who hold positions of authority, may the spirit of peace and justice be at home in their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, may the consoling spirit be their strength and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us marked with a sign of faith, may they know the fullness of life in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faith community of St. Margaret Mary Alico, may all our activities lead us to greater knowledge, love, and service of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our silent and individual intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you sent your Holy Spirit upon the apostles, and through them and their successors, you, you give the Spirit to your people. May his work be begun at Pentecost, continue to grow in the hearts of all who believe. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, <laughs> Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come on failingly to her aid, so that with a heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, her loving spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Margaret Mary Alaco, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, with Mitchell, our Bishop, with Archbishop, Mich Archbishop Carlson, our Emeritus Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to one another some sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Mass this evening, we'll use two Eucharistic ministers. Please join in our first communion hymn, number 339, The Supper of the Lord, number 339.
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O oh Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. So again, just to take this opportunity on behalf of our parish family, uh, to welcome back Archbishop Emeritus Carlson and special blessings this evening for his sponsor, retired Bishop Bob Herman. So uh, let's give him a word of encouragement. God bless you. <laughs> Immediately after our Mass, we'll have a picture up here with all of the uh, confirmandi, and then everyone is invited over to the Appear Center for a continued fellowship. So again, we'll have our recessional song, but we'll reassemble here with the uh, students. We're using tonight a special blessing. And at the end of each paragraph, the uniform response is, amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. God our Father made you as children by water and the Holy Spirit. May he bless you and watch over you with his fatherly love. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, promised that the Spirit of truth would be with his church forever. May he bless you and give you courage in professing the true faith. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit came down upon the disciples and set their hearts on fire with love. May he bless you, keep you one in faith and love, and bring you to the joy of God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.